My name is Pastor Eliezer. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church in Frederick, Maryland. As part of the Easter season, you have been able to watch a selection of joyful photos of United Methodists around the world. These photos have been said in an upbeat rendition of the song Marching in the Light of God, performed by Africa University Choir. Photographs were taken by United Methodist News Service for, uh, photographers and also by photographers from various United Methodist conferences around the world. These videos and pictures feature United Methodists living their faith and making a positive difference in the world. Welcome, welcome indeed to our time of worship this morning. If you are watching this morning or whenever you are able to watch. We're glad you are with us. Our worship services have been impacted by, uh, like any other thing in this community, by this pandemic. And we are indeed grateful to God that we are able to come to worship via this venue. This will be something we will continue to do until we are given new instructions of what is safe to do. We urge everyone to be safe, to stay strong, and to not lose hope. Please stay tuned as we seek to provide additional ways for us to continue to strengthen our faith in the midst of this pandemic and continue to grow together through the use of technology. We are back with our Grow Time studies, our Pastor Mark's Bible study, men's Bible study, and women's Bible study. We look forward to see this process continue and grow into other possibilities for our congregation to continue to grow in faith and hope. Communion for May 3rd service um, might be something we will do the same way we did the last one. So just, just keep tuned to more information. We're not sure exactly how things are going to be working for that service, for that Sunday. So we're hoping that you will be connected to us and listen to what we have to say for the future of that service. Um, we would like to offer the opportunity for folks to come to Trinity or to, to just drive by and get um, a cup of juice with a little wafer on top. And uh, we will send this out and, and an email so that people know exactly how this looks like. Um, so that you can have this before the communion service on the May 3rd. So please 
um, stay connected so that you can get this information, know exactly what we're going to be doing, or if you'd rather stay home and, 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 uh, and just get a piece of bread um, and uh, a little bit of juice or something that you can use for communion, remember, the, the power of God is not connected to the elements, it is connected to the power of God and the grace of God that is working through the elements we use. After you watch today's service, we encourage you to hit the like button at the bottom of the um, video. Um, and if you are interested in getting more information about or sharing information about the prayer request you have, please also do that via um, the comments at the bottom or email them to us at the office. We will love to hear from you and to know what your concerns are, and we would like to pray with you and to continue to support you through prayer. Um, so please, indeed, make sure you either write them down or send them to us via email. We will like to indeed continue to connect with you. May the Lord bless us as we worship together. Good morning. The Lord has risen. Welcome to our time to worship the living God. My name is Pastor Mark Claiborne, and I'm the associate pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church. The God of the ages has come into our lives, calling on us to open our hearts and our minds to God's will. Today we come from far and near to celebrate the second Sunday after Easter. Therefore, wherever you are today, Come, let us worship the living God. Our God is alive. Our God is alive indeed. Will you join me in our call to worship? What a great day this is. It is, it is a, a joy, joy to, to be, be here, here today. today. Jesus Christ is risen and is among us. Praise God for the glorious gift of God's Son. Rejoice, friends, for the Lord has called us here. We come joyfully, for we have heard the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Open your spirits to receive all God's blessings. May God shower blessings upon us so that we may in turn bless God by our service. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our opening hymn is I Know That My Redeemer Lives. together. 
Gracious God, we give you honor and respect this morning. Thank you for keeping us and watching over us. And thank you for blessing us with everything that we need. You are an amazing God, and beside you there is no other. There's so much going on in this world today, but you are still in control of everything. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty. And you are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, and the Lord of victory. So this morning we lift up this prayer to you because there's no other help that we know. We pray that you heal this country and that you heal this land. We pray that you heal your people who are suffering from this terrible virus and from all kinds of different diseases. We pray that you bless those who have lost loved ones. And we pray that you continue to keep us safe and protected from being infected. Give us a strong immune system to keep us from hurt, harm, or danger and to be able to fight off any threat that may come our way. Give us wisdom when we leave our homes and help us to take every precaution necessary to stay healthy. We pray that you bless people who have lost their jobs and we pray that you bless people who can't pay their bills. Bless people who can't buy groceries. And bless people without health care. And we ask that you bless the homeless who don't have shelter and who don't know where their next meal is coming from. We pray that you continue to protect the elderly and keep them healthy during this crisis. We pray that you watch over all of our members and all of our families and all of our friends. And during times such as these, we continue to put our trust and our faith in the Most High God so that we don't have to look to our left or to our right. We look to the hills which come of our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. In our times of worry, we ask that you give us trust. In our times of doubt, we ask that you give us faith. In our times of trouble, give us rest and assurance that everything is going to be okay because you have everything under control. We continue to pray for those in hospitals and nursing homes. We ask that you touch those patients with your loving hands. Never leave their side. We pray that you be with all of the doctors and nurses and emergency respondents. We ask that you keep them protected from this virus. Thank you for their courage to serve the sick and put their lives on the line. We pray that you be with our military forces and everyone who is essential personnel throughout this country. We pray for those who are lost and don't know you for themselves. We pray that they get to know you in the mighty name of Jesus. We continue to pray for our leaders of this country and we ask that you bless every nation as we pray for world peace. We lift this prayer up to you as we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. For it's in your son's name, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of praise will be, To God be the glory.
Join me in the communal prayer. Generous God, we thank you for your presence with us in all of our lives. As we gather this morning, we are reminded of the many times we have doubted and feared. Today, banish our fears with the memory of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus the Messiah. Remind us that through all our troubles, doubts, and fears, your power, mercy, and love are always with us. Even though we have come through the joy of Easter and the triumphant Easter songs, yet we are fearful and doubtful, Lord, like Thomas who walked the Judean countryside with Jesus. We still have trouble believing in the resurrection of Jesus. We easily slip back into the darkness of doubt and the fear that often, often paralyzes us. We move the joy of Easter into the past and continue in a downward path to confusion. But today, we call upon you to shine your bright light of joy upon us. Lighten our dark path. Help us to believe, even though we have not seen you, nor have, have we, we touched, touched your hands and side. Help, Help us, us to proclaim your love, mercy, and compassion for the world. In, In Jesus, Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. For our words of assurance, do not fear, dear friends. Jesus is among us, offering us new life and hope. Nothing can prevent God's love for us. Rejoice, for you have been made new in Christ. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading is coming out of the book of Psalm in the 16th chapter. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, and whom is all my delight. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. and the night also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure, for you do not give me up to the shore, or let your faithful ones see the pit. 
you show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second reading is coming from 1 Peter in the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Amen. For our special song this morning, Jesus, Lover of My Soul, by Fernando Ortega. Sin I am, thou art 
Lord, full of truth and grace. Grace with thee is found, grace to cover all my sin. Let the healing streams abound, make and keep me pure within. Thou of life, the fountain art, freely let me take of thee. Spring thou up within my heart, rise to all eternity. from the gospel this morning is from the gospel of John and is chapter 20 of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and put my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare to present our gifts, our tithings, and our offerings to the Lord this morning, 
I just wanted to share something short with you about, um, about the gifts that we receive and we have received in the church and how these gifts continue to support and help pastors in other parts of, of the world. As you all know, of course, we are a connectional church. And as a connectional church, that means that we support each other throughout what we call the connection. That is, we support people all over the world who are part of our church family and even those who are not part of our church family. But in this case, just to give you an example of how your support is blessing countless of people around the world, you need to know that your support at this time has been, uh, has been a blessing to so many people around the world, especially our pastors, just to give you an example. Our pastors in some parts of the country who are not able to receive a salary, who are not able to receive compensation, we are able to help those pastors by providing some help to them uh, through, through the gifts that you um, give to this congregation. Your gifts, your tithings, your offerings are enabling the United Methodist Church to help their pastors in Africa, to help pastors in, in Europe, to help pastors in many other places around the world. Pastors who have been impacted also by the coronavirus, the congregations have been impacted by the coronavirus, and they're not able to contribute to the church's finances. And so we are able to help those pastors by your contributions so that they will also continue to have some, some sort of support to continue their ministries in their communities. So you make that possible. You make possible that our brothers and sisters around the world are able to receive the kind of support that they need to continue to do their ministry, to continue to be a presence of, of hope in the midst of many difficulties. So please, as you, as you prepare yourselves to, to present your gifts, tithings, and your offerings to the Lord, remember how far your gifts go to bless countless of people around the world. At this point, you most likely will be seeing the QR code that we have mentioned every Sunday. Um, so if you're able to do that, or just able to go to our website and, and go to the donation page, um, you will be able to give uh, to our congregation and continue to support our ministry. If you're not able to do that, you are still able to send your contributions directly to our church uh, via mail. So please, by all means, give from what you're, pos what you're able to give so that we may continue to support our brothers and sisters around the world. At this time, my brothers and sisters, you will have, you will hear uh, the doxology. This is a special doxology. Um, more than anything else, it's a doxology for us to be blessed by hearing it, and also as you hear it, you can sing along. Um, and it's a beautiful rendition from Salah, which is a group of Christians who, who have many songs for many, many years, um, and they're blessing us with this wonderful rendition of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, oh, oh. 
creatures here below. Here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. At this point, my brothers and sisters, let us join together in, in the prayer of consecration. Gracious God of light and hope, we bring our gifts, tidings, and offerings to you this morning, still riding the joy of our Easter celebration for your triumph over the grave. Scripture has reminded us that we have been given the pathway for new birth, the promise of an imperishable inheritance, and the power of God's protection over life and death. Silent in the realization of these priceless gifts, we offer ourselves to make this good news known to those who have not yet heard the good news. With praise and thanksgiving, we dedicate all these gifts to you this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the time of our morning uh, meditation, I'd like you to please join me in the word of prayer again. Blessed and loving God, we pray, O oh Lord, that you indeed speak to our hearts this morning, Lord. We have come from many places, we have come from far and near, but we have all come to praise you. We have all come to hear your word proclaimed. So we pray, Lord, that you help us to hear what you have prepared for us this morning, Lord. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Open our heart and open our minds, Lord, that we may come to comprehend what your will for our lives is, Lord. Loving and blessed God, to you we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning we are indeed presented with three wonderful readings, of course, as we usually do. The blessing that we have this morning is that we have indeed the passage from the letter of Peter, first letter of Peter, chapter 1, as Pastor Mark read so uh, eloquently earlier today. This is a powerful reading for us to be reminded. You know, last week we talked about the fact that we cannot let our fears take over our lives because, of course, we're not a people uh, of, of fear. We're people who have been empowered by God, by the Holy Spirit, to move beyond fear, to move to action, to action for we trust God. The letter of Peter is one of those letters that indeed brings to our attention the fact that this letter is entirely, almost entirely, a letter about suffering and persecution and how to live a life of faith and hope in the midst of suffering and persecution. Indeed, we have today in this letter a wonderful reminder that God is present with us, with us in the midst of all our challenges. In the midst of our, all our difficulties around the world, God is present with us. In the midst of our, all the difficulties we're confronting in this community, God is present with us. And that's what this letter is all about. This letter, of course, speaks about the reality of persecution, but it's also a letter that speaks about the reality of suffering in the midst of that persecution, the suffering that takes place even today, not because of a persecution, but because of this pandemic we are confronting as a society, as a world community. For indeed, we have come to see that indeed we are a world community. We are linked with each other. We depend on each other. We desperately need to see each other as part of each other. We need to see the other, those who live far from us and those who live just around the corner, we need to see them as part of us, for they are indeed God's people too. This letter encourages us 
to look at the fact of how God's grace has been working through the world, how the grace of God has been working through people like you and I, how God's grace is working in the world to bring reconciliation and restoration to people's lives all over the world. Imagine all those people who are working in hospitals, all those people who are serving in, 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 in hospitals and other places where people are being taken care of, and all those people who happen to be people of faith, who because of their faith commitment, because of the hope that comes from their understanding of God's power working in their lives, they're willing to give their best to serve those who are in need in our midst today. That is the power of God and the grace of God working through our brothers and sisters in the world, in our community, right here in Frederick. Indeed, I believe that God has, is helping us to realize how much we need each other. If we, ever, if we ever had to look at this reality of this pandemic and see the silver lining I think that the silver lining in all this is precisely the realization that has come from our understanding that we need each other. That indeed we can make a difference in how we behave towards each other. If we take care of ourselves, we not only take care of ourselves, we also take care of the other. If we do the right thing by doing the things that we're told to do, washing our hands and, and, uh, and, and wiping the surfaces of uh, places we touch, if we keep things clean as we have been told, not only do we do it for ourselves, but we also do it for our brothers and sisters who are out there. If we take care of the things that we're supposed to take care of, if we use the mask that we have been told to use, we're not only doing it for ourselves, we're doing that for our brothers and sisters who are around us, who might have been impacted by our behavior. So we have indeed, we have come to this wonderful realization that we indeed have a responsibility for each other, that we have a responsibility to care for each other by also caring for ourselves. Isn't that a wonderful thing to hear? Isn't that a wonderful thing to understand that God indeed in His grace is helping us to realize how important it is that we do the right thing for ourselves as we do that, we also take care of our brothers and sisters around us. By helping and supporting our church, by helping and supporting other institutions that provide assistance to people in this community and around the world, we're helping our brothers and sisters all over the world. We're helping our brothers and sisters right here in this community. You are making a difference, and it's incredible to see this because the impact of the things that we do, the behavior we exhibit is, is an incredible thing to see how this behavior as we do the things we have been told to do, how that indeed is going to impact everyone else. And of course, we realize also in the same fashion that as we do those things today, this is also the reality of what has happened in the world even before the pandemic, how our behavior has impacted everybody else around the world, how our behavior impacts the the way that things, uh, uh, the things happen around the world, the good things and also the bad things. For the reality is that our behavior as a nation impacts people around the world, sometimes in a positive way, but other times in a negative way, so that indeed we know we have a responsibility to make a difference in the world by the way we live, by the way we act, by the way we interact with each other, so that we also can see how God is working in the world through our actions and the actions of our brothers and sisters all over the world. The letter of Peter, indeed, is a letter that speaks to the reality of persecution and suffering and oppression. It's a letter that speaks to us about how can we trust the living God who is present in our lives. How this God who has made a promise to be with us is a God who is indeed promising to us that we have an inheritance. 
an inheritance that, that is imperishable, an inheritance that is undefiled, an inheritance that is unfading, something that is not going to pass away because God has made the promise that He will be with us. This God have, has promised that He will be present in our lives through all the challenges we might be confronting by our sicknesses. By our challenges, God has been present and will be present. This God will protect us by God's power through faith. Do we believe that this God is present in our lives? And that the same God who is present in our lives is also present in this world? And if we are obedient to God's will, indeed, we will see the glory of God and how God works and intervenes in the whole world. For this God, of course, is not a God who's only interested in his own agenda. God is interested in our reality as human beings. God is interested in, know, in letting you know and letting me know and letting us all know that he is present, that God is present. And this God, in this letter of 1 Peter, calls us to rejoice, to rejoice in the midst of suffering, to rejoice in the midst of difficulties, for we all know that we have an inheritance even after all the suffering is done, even after all the challenges we're confronting passed away, we have the security, the certainty that God is present and God will never leave us alone. For God indeed is faithful to us. God is faithful to us and God has made a promise to be with us always to the end. I found it fascinating that in this letter, of course, we find an incredible uh, connection to the reading from the gospel. For you see, sometimes you know, we, we, it escapes us what, what happens with Thomas in the gospel, right? At the end of the chapter 20 that we were reading, towards the end of the chapter, we find Thomas in a situation where Thomas comes in and says that he cannot believe unless he sees, and then Jesus shows up and shows him his hands in his side. And it's at that point that then Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus questions him by saying, so because you have seen, you believe. And then Jesus uttered the words, blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. And here in this letter, we find a similar expression from Peter. Although you have not seen, in verse 8, although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. Rejoice then, rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. Rejoice in the fact that we have come to believe that this Jesus is indeed part of our lives, that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is not simply a resurrection that took place some 2,000 years ago, but that this, this resurrection actually has an impact in our lives today. For indeed, for those of us who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a hope for the future, that God is in control. We know that the end is not death, but that the end is in God's hands, and therefore we can trust our God. Whether we live or die, we know we belong to Christ. We belong to God. Whether we live or we die, we belong to the one who is indeed our God. If you have believed without seeing, if you have come to love him without seeing him, indeed, as Jesus said, you are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed to receive the outcome of our faith, which is the salvation that God has promised to us. 
And our salvation is not simply, as we have said here so many times, it's not simply, simply an experience that is uh, inwardly. Salvation is the experience of God's grace that we experience in our lives. And then this experience also comes into the world so that we indeed serve God through serving the people in this world. By loving them. By caring for them. By being in solidarity with them. That when they cry, we cry. When they laugh, we laugh. For we have come to believe and understand who Jesus is. And we have come to see God working in this world through his grace. My brothers and sisters, this is a time to rejoice. This is a time indeed to rejoice in the grace of God. To rejoice indeed in that wonderful experience of knowing that God is present in the midst of our challenges, that God is present in the midst of darkness, that God is present in the midst of this pandemic. God is present, and if we trust this God, we can certainly know that our lives will be secure in his presence. That's why the hymn from Charles Wesley is so appropriate for us to conclude to this today's service when we come to the end of the service for in that hymn, of course, we are reminded to rejoice. To rejoice, the Lord is king. The Lord is the one who's in charge. His kingdom cannot fail. Rejoice in the glorious hope of the resurrection that we have received through Christ. Jesus, the Savior, reigns. Reigns right now. Right here, not in, a, not in a time to come, but right now, right here, the God of truth and love, when he has purged our stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Let us rejoice in this knowledge in the knowledge of God's salvation that has been given to us in the midst of any crisis and every crisis we confront, we know that our God is present, loving us, carrying us forward as we serve God in all things. Amen and amen. Would you please join me at this time in the response to the word, as is written in the bulletins that you received. We've been, we've, we have been in hiding for too long. Perhaps we should open the doors of our lives to welcome whatever comes. But suppose that destruction, fear, and death arrive at our door. Jesus always said to us, do not be afraid. I am with you. Lord, help us to believe. Why is it so difficult to believe? We have been disappointed so many times. Do we dare trust that this time will be different? Everything is different when we trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to believe. What will we do if we actually see the risen Lord? Our fears will be banished, and we will live in the truth of Christ. What is the truth of Jesus? Jesus has overcome the bonds of death. He is risen and goes before us. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of God be upon you. May God's grace that unfolds us, that is around us, that is all and ever present, be with you. That as you seek to live in the will of God, you may indeed find the grace that is already there. In the name of Jesus, be at peace.